So apparently we're now in the Premier League. Media prediction, 20th. Not going to be easy. It was kind of a miracle that we got automatic promotion out of the championship in the first place. But you know what? I don't see why we can't stay in the Premier League. Um, let's just hope we can overachieve again. So transfer-wise, I got given around £19 million to spend. Um, we ended up selling Ben Marshall to Sunderland for around £7 million. That could potentially increase to £10 million. Now, I didn't really want to sell him, but... Um, sorry if you could hear, like, some sound in the background. That was me playing with my fidget cube, and then I just kind of realised that I'm recording, so I probably shouldn't be fidgeting with my fidget cube. But yeah, um... <clears throat> I didn't want to get rid of him, but he kind of threw a fit once Sunderland came in. So I thought, you know what, might as well get rid of him. Players we've signed, as you can see, we've signed a lot of players. And I don't normally like signing a lot of players. And on previous FMs, when I've gotten Blackburn promoted out of the Premier League first time round, I haven't really had to do that many key transfers because we used to have players like Jordan Rhodes and Tom Kearney and so on, at least the last time I used to play previous versions of FM when I actually had time to play previous versions of FM so we'd be going into the Premier League with a much stronger squad than we have done this season because we really really did overachieve last season so I've had to sign a heck of a lot of players haven't really spent too much money on anyone bar Ludwig uh, August Augustinson um, who's a player you might have heard of he's kind of a bit of a wonder kid on FM um, but I didn't sign him because He's a wonder kid. I signed him because he genuinely did look really good and we needed a left back because obviously Stephen Hendry um, <laughs> left because we had him on loan. Basically, three quarters of our squad last season that we got promoted with was with loan players. So I've had to completely revamp our squad. First signing, James McLean um, from West Brom. Not an amazing player, but Premier League standard and he gives us a lot more depth in midfield. Pretty fast, pretty pacey, good on the ball. Um, we bought him for £3.4 million, and he's only on 32 k a week, so that's not too shabby, really. Next up, we've got uh, Adlen uh, Kadiura from Watford. We signed him for 600 k bit of a bargain. Um, he's kind of our best midfielder, in my opinion, now, at least for the box-to-box -box role that we had in our 442 that we're going to try and continue using uh, going into the Premier League. So, decent player, decent signing. Good all-round central midfielder, got a bit of everything really, just got to try and hope he can stay fit. Next up, of course, we've got Tyus Brown in. Now, this was the player that I brought in on loan in January when we were in the championship just to try out and accidentally realised I put a mandatory um, future fee as opposed to an optional future fee on him, which means that we ended up paying 400 k for him and we're stuck with him and he's nowhere near Premier League standard. So he's just been sent on loan to League One, Scunthorpe, and let's just hope he improves, but I can't really see him improve. Next signing, uh, a bit of a controversial one. Uh, kind of signed Andre Gray from Burnley. Now, if you don't know, Blackburn and Burnley is basically <laughs> the fiercest football rivalry in the country. Uh, at least if you ask me, and I know a lot of people uh, agree with that as well. But at the end of the day, Burnley got relegated and he wanted to jump ship, you know, and come to the right side of Lancashire. He's, he's, he's played pretty well in pre-season. He's been banging them in. He suits the deep line forward role pretty well. Um, so, yeah, didn't really spend much on him. Only £1.4 million. And I think he's going to be key to, uh, to us staying up this season or at least trying to stay up this season. Next up, 275k, Lee Wallace from Rangers. Pretty old, 30 years old. We only spent 275k on him. But as you can see, he's a pretty decent left back. Decent all-rounder. Not on that much money a week uh, either. He can also play centre-back and anywhere down the left-hand side of the pitch. Technically decent as well. Got a nice burst of pace on him, so he can definitely whip a ball into, into the box. He's not meant to be our, our, our main left-back, but as backup, he's a lot better than what we had last season. Another signing, a bit of an FM legend back in, I think, FM 12 or something like that. This guy used to become immense. Unfortunately, as with a lot of FM wonder kids, Reality is very different to what has happened in previous FM games. It's uh, Damien Letalek. 
He's a French central midfielder. Um, signed him from Cervena Zvezda, a team in the, in the Serbian first division. We need a bit more depth in that defensive midfield role, so I've decided to bring him in. He's not going to be a starter for us, but again, we lost a lot of players um, because of the players that disappeared at the end of the season because we had a lot of players um, out on loan. Uh, in on loan, sorry. So again, it's all about making sure we've got squad depth because it's going to be a long season, and I guarantee you injuries will cause problems. And one of the problems we faced towards the end of the, at end of last season, towards the end of the championship season, was dealing with injuries. Next up was Dario Dumic. Now, obviously, last season we had Tommy Hoban playing centre back alongside Charlie Mulgrew, so centre back was kind of one of my priorities. And this guy, um, this Bosnian centre back, got offered to me. He played in uh, the Eredivisie for NEC, and uh, we signed him for 2.5 million. And if you look at his stats, he's actually pretty decent: 14 heading, 13 marking. So that, that's not amazing, but he can work on him. Um, 15 tackling, 15 work rate, decent determination, decent strength jumps pretty high and is very very tall as well so that's really what you need and he's got a nice bit of pace on him as well we play with a bit of a high line so that extra bit of pace really does help next up our biggest sign in like i said this guy's a bit of a wonder kid this year um and uh, the only way i found that out was by googling his name once my scouts recommended him to me tackling and marking could be better so he's not amazing defensively but he should be able to put a decent shift in and he's much 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 better than the left backs we had last season very fast decent acceleration and pace um and he's got 15 crossing and 15 corners so hopefully we'll score as many corners as we did last season as well as the fact that this guy will hopefully bomb forward and get some decent balls into the box for our strikers we paid a lot of money for him and he's on pretty high wages as well but i really do feel like if this guy can utilize these traits and start getting balls into the box then we'll score goals and that's what we're gonna to have to do to stay up another sign in fabio obviously ex cardiff ex man united middlesbrough got relegated so i decided to pick fabio up once we sold uh ben marshall to sunderland now fabio is a much better right back than ben marshall ben marshall kind of played right back for us in the championship and he weren't even a right back uh, the only thing I'd change about Fabio if I could was kind of make him a little bit bigger, which makes him a little bit better defensively, obviously. But in pre-season, he's actually helped a lot getting forward. Uh, he's got a nice burst of pace on him as well. Decent crossing, decent tackling, decent marking. Really the best we can hope for, given our stature as a club and the amount of money we had to spend. Next up is Yaya Sonogo. I didn't really want to re-sign him, but the only two strike, well, three strikers that I had were Danny Graham, who I don't think can cut it in the Premier League anymore. Um, that other striker that we brought in, Andre Gray, who, like I said, I think is probably our best striker at the moment, but he's a very different type of striker to Danny Graham. And Anthony Stokes. Uh, we didn't even play Anthony Stokes in the Championship, so I'm not really expecting him to get much of a sniff in the Premier League. So I was looking for strikers to buy, came across a few... And then I realised that Yaya Sonogo is available on a free. Now his finishing and composure will probably still be problematic for us. But he's honestly better than everything else out there. And Yaya Sonogo on a free, he's already valued at 7.5 million. We might as well give him a crack in the Premier League. Because even though 19 million might seem like a lot, I've honestly had to revamp the squad so much because of the fact that we got promoted with a team that was half full of low knees. So I'm happy with this signing. Last but not least, Johan Gofran. Now, this is a player that causes all sorts of problems playing for Newcastle last season. Uh, and again, available on a free. He's got a decent amount of quality, no money to spend, decent signing if you ask me. And we've kind of just got to hope that he gives us that little bit of added depth. And after this signing, I wanted to make one more signing. Um, and I did make one more signing, which was a striker. He goes by the name of Nabil Gilas. And, uh, whoops, if I can actually get to his profile, and he was kind of the Danny Graham replacement I wanted. He's 185 centimetres, so not that tall, but he's really strong, really big as well, phenomenal in the air. And I signed him and everything, 1.4 million, 40k a week, seemed like a really decent deal. And I was feeling positive, I was like, yes, this, this is the striker we need. To, 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 to stay in the Premier League, this guy, alongside Andre Gray, are going to make a killer partnership. 
And then after I signed him, I kind of like went forward a few days and I was like, what the hell? The, the season's almost going to start and he's still not arrived at the club yet. And then I realized that it said joining Blackburn on the 1st of June 2018. And we're obviously in 2017. So I investigated and it turned out that he's on loan from Porto at Gaziantespor for two years. So we can't get him until his loan deal at Gaziantespor is over. So I've gone and paid 1.4 million and agreed a contract with this guy and he's not even going to join us until next year. And next year we could be back in the championship. Plus we've lost that money that we paid by the way, which means I can't put that money towards another striker. So that's kind of tilted me a little bit. Um, trying to be positive, we had an okay pre-season. Defensively looked pretty sound, but first game of the season is at home against Chelsea. It's on TV. They've got a new interesting manager because Conte got picked up by Barcelona. So uh, Roberto Mancini has come to Chelsea. And uh, not really expecting to get anything from that game. I think if we are going to try and stay up and try and achieve that 40-point mark, it's teams like Ar uh, Arsenal, teams like Crystal Palace, Sunderland, West Brom and Newcastle, etc. That, that we have to try and get points off. No idea how the 4-4-2 is going to fare me in the Premier League, but I want to keep faith at least for a month or two. So on that note, let's just go to Ewood Park and play Chelsea and see what happens. All right, ladies and gents, welcome to Ewood Park. For Blackburn Rovers' first game back in the Premier League. We're at home against Chelsea and four minutes in, we've got a corner and we've got a penalty as well. So hopefully Danny Graham is going to be the man to take this. Yes, he is. I don't think he missed a single penalty. Jesus Christ, that was fast. I don't think he missed a single penal penalty last season in the Championship. So what a start if he can if he can put us 1-0 up against Chelsea. And he does! Danny Graham. I was hesitant about renewing his contract I'm not going to jump to any conclusions just yet, but four minutes in, he's proving me wrong. I think the penalty was a little bit harsh on David Luiz and the rest of Chelsea, but you know what? I couldn't give a damn. We're 1-0 up against Chelsea, and that's exactly what the doctor ordered. But Chelsea aren't going to lie down. Um, seven or so minutes in, and uh, they're yet to really mount an attack. And the second I say that, they get two shots on target. So they sold Diego Costa, just to give you a bit of context, they sold Diego Costa to PSG. So they've dished out £45 million, I think it was, on Kevin Volland. Um, <laughs> which is why you saw Kevin Volland at the bottom of the screen. But anyways, here we go. We're actually approaching half-time. It's on key highlights. So, yeah, Chelsea haven't really been able to create much, which is awesome. Just to go over the kind of things that I changed, I set both my fullbacks in this kind of scenario. We're, we're obviously playing with a defensive mentality, and I'm not going to change that now that we're 1-0 up. Um, when I'm going to be playing against these top teams in the Premier League, I'm going to set my fullbacks to become defensive fullbacks. Obviously, you're up against your Sunderlands and your Newcastles and you know your Everton. Yeah, I'll, I'll I'll give my fullbacks a little bit more freedom because there's more room to try and try and uh, exploit. But against a team like Chelsea, particularly given that they're playing a four-two-three-one, and Chini's their manager is going to be looking to try and and use them wide playmakers. Um, I really don't want my fullbacks bombing forward and leaving space for Chelsea to uh, to uh, counter attackers. But anyway, so far so good. Danny Graham with the first goal of the game. As you can see, we've gone with McLean on the left, Guardiola. Um, uh, in the middle and Conway on the right and there's not much point in really changing much um, so far so good but you know you just know that Chelsea aren't going to aren't going to die down they're going to keep knocking on our door they certainly have the quality in their side to do so but at the same time I've got faith in our defense I mean you look at our lineup let's just pause this for a second steel had him last season. Mulgrew had him last season. That's two. Lenihan had him last season. That's that's three. Conway had him last season. That's four. Graham had him last season. That's five. So out of the 11 players we've currently got on the pitch, six of them are, are new players. That's basically what I had to go, go through in the transfer window. And it will take time for a lot of these players to also adapt to the tactical familiarity. So if I go back now and take a look here... Well, it's not going to come up now. But if I take a look at our tactical familiarity, it's almost full 
But you can see all these new players, they're still around the 50-40% mark. The Letalic is around the 40% mark, you know. So that sometimes does influence how we play as a team as well, which is why um, I've gone with, for example, Lenny Han at defensive mid as opposed to Damian Letalic because he's going to know the system better. And I think at this point in the season, going with that choice is going to help us more than, you know, throwing in even more new players so we've got a decent solid base with five of the players being relatively familiar with the tactic um, <clears throat> and not being new players so a decent mixture between the two but as we approach the 70th minute we've had more shots than Chelsea which is good to see um, Kurt Zuma gets a yellow card and we're probably going to start thinking of making a change Kodiora is going to come off for Hope Akpan and by the way, I won Manager of the Year last year in the Championship. I forgot to mention that. And uh, both Jason Steele, Craig Conway won Player of the Year. And uh, Jason Steele was also in Team of the Year. That's why I've not decided to bring in another goalkeeper. And to be honest, I didn't really have money to waste on a new goalkeeper. I know a lot of people will argue that a goalkeeper will win your points and stuff. And yeah, without a shadow of a doubt, but only if your goalkeeper's terrible. Jason Steele, I think had a pretty good season last season, so he deserves a pop in the Premier League. But uh, other than that, so far, so good. McLean and Conway doing well on the wings. And not really seen much chances carved out for either Danny Graham or Andy, and, uh, Andy Gray, Andre Gray. So we're just going to, with a few minutes to go, play even safer. Drop a little bit deeper. And uh, just try and run down the clock. There we go. Long ball from Steele straight towards Danny Graham. And now Craig Conway is going to look to cut inside as Hope Akpan newly substituted on. Wins the ball in midfield. And even though one of my uh, my fullbacks meant to be on defensive, Fabio still run forward. He's going to whip the ball in now, surely. And Danny Graham is going to make it too. We're 2-0 up against Chelsea at home. Mancini is collapsing. And what a start to our Premier League um, campaign that's why I signed Fabio a lot of the fans were kind of like do we really want to sign a player who's just gotten relegated because he got relegated with Middlesbrough but if a player's good enough a player's good enough I don't think you can blame an individual player or, 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 or you know say an individual's player performance as the reason Middlesbrough got relegated I think the main reason Middlesbrough will have got relegated last season was poor management but uh, anyhow not seen much of Andre Gray, but the thing, uh, the reason why I wanted to sign Andre Gray, in the championship we met, went with Graham and Sonogo, two very physical strikers, because it's, it's a very physical league. Whilst in the Premier League, you start getting, sure, you know, even more physical uh, centre-backs, but centre-backs are a lot more pacey in the Premier League as well. So sometimes you need that little bit different, which is what I think Andre Gray will offer us. Uh, maybe not against Chelsea, but against other teams, I do think he he should be able to maybe finish the season with 10, 15 goals. But anyways, <laughs> my 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 assistant manager says that he thinks we can be pleased with the football played. Um, I'm definitely pleased with that. See you later, Chelsea. So let's just take a look at their their lineup. So the four two three one, uh, they they brought Danilo in at right back, uh, Christensen is obviously a youngster who uh, they now think can break into the first team. Had John Terry alongside him. Dave at left back. Um, Fabregas. So yeah, world-class players. Main, mainly Volland and, Volland and Danilo and Christensen are the new players there. But we've just beat that team with our team. Uh, I, I, can't, I can't believe it. But uh, we were defensively resilient. Um, as you can see, we more than matched them and we dominated possession. Sure, we're at home, but this is still Chelsea at the end of the day. And they <laughs> Basically, we had £19 million to overhaul our entire squad. And they spent... Well, how much did they spend on Volland? £45 million on Volland alone. And he did absolutely nothing that game. So, I don't want to get too excited. <laughs> but, if, uh, if this is a sign of things to come, then... Uh, I think we're in for a decent season, but long, long way to go. We want to hit that all-important 40-point mark. That's definitely a way to start doing it. And until next time, hit that subscribe button, hit the like button, and uh, <laughs> see you next time against Arsenal.